Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at a request from an Augie who is having trouble getting his WJXT, um, WXTJ, WJQ, you know what I mean, the FT8 stuff, connected to uh, his 7300, ICOM 7300. So we're going to just walk through that process a little bit in the hopes that as we do that we'll show some things that will help him and maybe a few other people who are trying that for the first time. The process is pretty straightforward, but that doesn't mean that your computer can't throw you a curveball, because it certainly can. Let's take a look at my screen. I'm going to try something a little different with a, a little window that I can drag around on my screen and pick up the important things that we need to look at. One of the first things that you need to do when you are um, working with the uh, with the ICOM is set up the driver. Then you're going to connect a cable, which is a USB cable, it's the standard AB cable, which is the very original USB cable. Uh, it's the kind you still use for an HP printer. So we're going to go to ICOM America, okay, and then down here when we look at products, note that they support avionics too. I happen to have one of their, two of their avionics radio. One is installed in my airplane and the other is a handout. But we're going to look over here at Amateur. Okay, now there are base stations. Here we see the ICOM 7300 right here. So let's just click on that. And we look down here and we see all different kinds of things, including firmware and software. I just recently did uh, an article or uh, a, a video about upgrading to the IC7300 firmware version 1.4. That's quite recent. Now the USB driver, for some reason they have two versions. One is version 1.2 and it's dated 2017. We want the most recent one, which is version 1.3, which was updated in 2018. Note the many, many radios that it applies to. Okay, so if you click on this, it takes you to another screen where you do the uh, USB driver download. Note that it supports many different uh, radios here. Okay, there is an installation guide on how to do that. Basically, it says install the driver before you connect the USB cable. Okay, so um, there is a manual for the thing. Okay, um, let's see, where is the download? You have to agree to some millions of conditions and uh, so on, and then it uh, starts the download for you. And uh, now I usually save these in uh, a folder for uh, ICOM. I've got this folder, uh, let's see, it's probably here. Yeah, um, this is my list of downloads and I've got downloads from a gazillion people. And I like to keep anything I download, like from uh, uh, ICOM, in one place so I can find them again. Here's ICOM. Okay, and here are the things that you can download. Okay, this CD right here is the firmware download. Now what you're going to need to do is do an extract all. You right click on it, do an extract all, and what you will end up with is this right here. And this is the driver, and here's the one for Win 10. It's got x86 or x64. If you've got the newer computers, this is your 64-bit. The x86 actually means 32-bit. Go figure. Okay, and we've got the universal driver, the installer, and so on for the 64-bit version and the 32-bit the version. Note that you install from here. 
what is in these folders here are support files. Okay, and uh, this tells us uh, how to install them. There's various other miscellany in there. Now, what do you go looking for after you install this? Okay, what you do is you, well, let me get out of this window here. It's kind of in the way, and I'm going to get out of, um, well, I'm going to use that in a minute. Okay, let's go down here and right click on start and come up here to device manager. Okay, device manager shows up up here. Okay, and what we're looking for are the ports. COM and LPT. Nobody uses LPT ports anymore, uh, but COM ports are still around. Okay, this is the one we're looking for the one that's got the Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART Bridge COM3. That's the number we need. And that's all we need off of this page is just that one number, 3. Okay? So we'll just close that because we don't need that anymore. Now, um, the next thing that you will do will be to connect the radio USB to the computer USB and just it will run through a few things and and then be happy. Okay now one of the first things we want to do if we're going to do uh, WSJTX uh, is we're going to first of all look for it WSJTX okay circle for it and here it is right here Physics, Princeton, EDU, Pulsar, uh, W6, and, and you might be asking, what on earth is it doing in there? Well, that's where Joe Taylor um, spent his career there, finished up at Princeton. He has a Nobel Prize in Pulsar physics. And um, one of the things that you have to do when you do radio astronomy is pay very, very careful attention to weak signals. And that's what the WS stands for, Weak Signals by Joe Taylor, version X, version, it's a leftover from a version 10. Um, okay, let's move this down because we're going to go, you'll want the documentation that you want to get. The latest general availability release is 2.3.0. Okay, so you can get the documentation for that. If you plan on getting exotic with the expedition modes, go there. But let's start here, okay? Now this will depend on which version. Notes he calls it Win32 and Win64. That is much easier to understand, okay? Um, there is a version for Mac right here. Um, you can get the source code if you want. Uh, there's a candidate release out here, but let's not worry about candidate releases. Let's get the installation package that's the latest here, and uh, my machine is a 64-bit machine, which most are these days, so you just click on that. That's all you have to do. And it shows up down here, and you put it where you want to put it, and see I'm putting it in Downloads, WSJTX, I've actually already downloaded it before I did this video, so I won't do it again, but WSJTX 2.3.0 Win64EXE, and that is the one that you want, okay? Now, um, we'll just close that, and we'll close that right now, and then you go ahead and install it in the usual manner, and then it will come up with kind of a blank. And then you have to go to, uh, if it doesn't come up with this already, File, Settings. And you get this menu right here. Now note how many different tabs there are here. Okay, General, My Call. Okay, E0OG, my grid, DM68CG. Okay, and it's got a few little questions like, I like a blank line between decoding periods. What that looks like, actually, is this right here. It says I'm receiving on 20 meters. By the way, the only band activity right now is WSJTX. 
on 20. Okay, I like the distance display in miles um, and the messages that I transmit. I want to see in the see in the receive window show some of this stuff here and so on. Um, double click on call sets transmit enable. That way you don't have to set transmit enable separately. Uh, disable transmit after sending 73. That keeps the thing from going on forever. Calling CQ forces call first. When you call CQ, you may have several people call you. And this isn't a terribly exciting method of picking who to go back to. It just says calling CQ forces uh, the first call that comes in the list. Uh, that's for me. Okay, you know, it'd be nice if there were an opportunity that said, call the juiciest DX, <laughs> but that would be a little hard. We don't need a CW ID in the United States. Okay, um, let's see. Um, decode Earth, Moon, Earth. We're not using it for Earth, Moon, Earth. A few other little things. Now let's go to the all-important radio page, okay? The rig ICOM 7300. You've got this enormous list of radios to choose from, okay? And we're going to choose the 7300 right there. We'll leave the polling interval at one second. The serial port, now here's where that number three comes in. Now the thing is fairly smart. It lists three things here. We're going to list COM3 because that's what we got when we installed the software. If all you have is the little USB, then your driver installation for the cable was not completed correctly. Note also, baud rate has to match. The uh, radio uh, is defaulted to a uh, variable baud rate. Um, however, the Win for ICOM software required that I set the radio to a baud rate of 115200. So um, I did. Well, that means the radio now will only accept communications on 115200. Okay. So I put that in there. Uh, data bits default, default, default. Push to talk method. I've used DTR for ages. And note that this requires the setup in the 7300 that will tell it to accept a DTR um, in order to um, push to talk. Okay, there are several methods of doing that. You could do it with cat, okay. Uh, I do it with DTR, some people do it with RTS, uh, and so on. It is port COM3, okay? Now, there's down here a test. Test the cat. This is the computer-aided transceiver. All right, it's a term I think Yesu invented many, many years ago. We tested it turns green, okay? It was successful. Now let's try testing push to talk. And we look over at the radio and sure enough the red light is on. It's transmitting. So we can turn that off and then we're okay. Now that we're okay, we've got our spectrum scope up here. Okay, and it's been picking up all sorts of stuff all evening. And we have down here the stuff that we want. Note here, this has to do with the level control. You can change the level control on the radio. And over here is the power out, and you can test by clicking tune, okay, which sends a tone out. And the tone is like really high on the power meter, so uh, I'm going to pull this down here. until I see the power at about 50 watts. Okay, by the way, I just upgraded this myself tonight. And then having done that, you are ready to use WSJTX. 
So there you go, just a real quick run through of setting up uh, your ICOM 7300 with the um, with the uh, the ICOM 7300 with the computer. I did receive a question about doing it with the FTDX 3000. Uh, the method for doing that is very, very uh, similar to that. Make sure you get the right ports uh, in there. There are a couple things you need to change on the uh, uh, 70 or on the 3000 FTDX 3000 uh, menu, and I believe I covered that in a blog post. So. If you would like to help support this channel, you certainly can go to uh, decastler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.